Yes? So just like this part right here? Yeah, just give me any information that you have written down and we can talk about it. It's preferably starting at the very beginning. Uh, you don't have to give a definition. I told you that one you didn't have to do. I might have a different definition than, than what you put down. And we can talk about that, but uh, everything but the definition. So we're on number four. We want to make sure everybody's at the same spot. We're on the back side of that page. We're looking at number four. And we're talking about some of these characteristics associated with ionic radii. So what's it, what do you have for me? Harley? Um, which area is the very, like that one? I had the metals. You are right. Okay? You are right. The metals. That's the first time today we got a quick answer for one of those. Okay? So let's look at the metals. Just look at the metals. And just look on page 159. Look at the green sphere. Look at the red sphere. And the red sphere is when it becomes an ion. So it becomes charged. Okay, an ion is a charged atom. So all the red circles are within the green circle, right? All the red circles are smaller than the green circle. Correct? Where are the, metals at? the metals are the left, middle section of the periodic table. Right. Very good. Very good. So let's, let's talk about why they are smaller compared to the atom when it's neutral. So to do that, we need to look at the definition of a cation. Okay, does anybody have a definition of a cation? Yes, Cameron? Positive ion. It's a positively charged atom. Right? So a cation, sometimes you can think of a cation... A cation um, with the T being positive. So when we say cation, that is a positively charged atom. And how did it get that way? How did it get to become positively charged? I mean, no? Did it add an extra proton? No, it lost an electron. Okay, so these lose electrons. Okay, so let's look at the size of the atom. Let's, let's take, for example, we're going to look at two examples, sodium. Now, we're under what causes this trend. So we know the trend is in metals. We know that those atoms get smaller. So what's causing this to happen? Why are they all getting smaller in size? So here's sodium. Here's Bohr's model of sodium. Okay. Here's magnesium. We want, we're going to do magnesium too. We're going to leave magnesium out. All right. So it goes two, eight, one. And this is right next to it, and so it's 2, 8, 2. So look at sodium, and look at its charge. This is uh, atomic number 11. Okay. Lapis, what's the charge of sodium on that chart? Number 11, what's its charge? Positive 1. So sodium is a positive 1. How does sodium become a positive 1? What electron is it going to lose? Yes, Michelle? The, um, this one. It's going to lose this electron. So it's going to lose this portion. Maybe. Did it get smaller? Yes. Okay. All right. So it becomes a positive one. All right. Look at magnesium. 
Monica, what's the charge of magnesium? The element 12. Two. Two. So there's two. It lo loses the whole outer shell. Remember we said outer shells are more important than anything. So it loses that whole outer shell and the atom becomes smaller. Any questions on why metals become smaller in size when it compared to the neutral atom? Hmm. Once you look at that, what is consistent on all of these, this is always going to be the case, they're always going to lose until they get to where? Until they get to the next shell or inner shell. And that shell is going to have a like a noble gas. So they're going to lose and get to get to the point where... Why do they lose to get to that? Because this seems to be a stable, low energy level that the electrons like to get. A lot of you choose sometimes to not expend a lot of energy at times because, you know, you want to relax. We can kind of let you do that. Uh, atoms will tend to get to the point where they're going to get to the lowest energy. And lower energy would be meaning losing electrons to get to where it's not. <clears throat> Any questions on cations and their size they become when they become charged? They get smaller. Metals get smaller, cations get smaller. So, so then you guys know anions, what they'll do, right? Instead of get smaller, they're going to get larger in size, right? Okay, so it says... Which area in the periodic table shows electron cloud getting larger in size? So then the red circle is bigger than the green circle. And that would be the what area? Non-metals. Excluding what group? Noble gases. So the noble gases are not going to gain or lose. So you should have non-metals written down for um, what area periodic table shows the electron cloud getting larger in size? It's the non-metals. Okay? It's the non-metals. So we get this term called an anion, and it's a negatively charged ion. Anions gain electrons. Okay? So let's look at one example as a visual for this. And so this is what's causing them to become larger. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Adding electrons. Adding electrons, right. So when we add electrons, we, we need to be careful if we use that as a reason because as we go across the periodic table, we're adding electrons, aren't we? And what, did, what happened to the size of the atom when we add electrons going across? They got smaller, right? So we don't want to say adding electrons. We need to put something else with that. I'll give you that here in a second. So let's take a look at nitrogen. All right, here's nitrogen. It has the two electrons, and it has five electrons. Okay, so this is nitrogen. What's nitrogen's charge? Element number seven, what's the charge? Three negative. Negative three, three negative, negative three. So it picked up how many electrons? Three. Three. So that's a total of eight. Hmm, did we see that before? Eight. Yes. Yes. When they lost, they got eight. Now they're gaining three to get eight. So when they get eight, how many protons do we have in the nucleus? We have seven. And after they gain their three electrons, how many protons do we have in the nucleus? Mm -hmm. Seven. Mm -hmm. Right? Because we're not adding proton. We're only adding electron. So if we add three more electrons, which they're negative and they repel one another, to the same region, what's going to happen to that region? It's going to expand. It's going to get bigger. So 
So this is going to go from uh, 5 to 8, and it's going to get bigger. It's going to be out here now. No longer will we have this here with the 5. Now we're going to have a bigger atom that has 8 electrons. Because they repel. So there's, wait, they add a the shell? Then... They don't add a shell. What they do, Cameron, is you add more electrons to the same shell without adding protons. And I'm going to write that up here so you guys like those written notes. You can go off of that. Now, because we added three electrons, and electrons don't, they repel one another, and we don't add any protons, they're just going to start spreading out. They're going to start getting bigger in size. Now, so I'll go ahead and write that down. And this is under what's causing trend. You can do the drawing, but you can also, the written part of it, we can go ahead and say, Additional electrons added. This is right above electronegativity. So, additional electrons added to atoms without adding protons cause repulsion of electrons in that outer shell. They, they're going to repel one another. And they're going to get away from one another. Because there's nothing keeping them in check. It's kind of like having um, a prison and having a lot of guards. And then you get more inmates and fewer guards. And they tend to maybe do some things and get away with some things and try to get away with things that they probably wouldn't try. So it's kind of that analogy is that, you know, they're going to be able to maybe try to escape or get away or whatever the case might be because there's less supervision, right? Okay. Like kids in a playground. You got a bunch of teachers out there, you get one teacher out there, it might be a little bit more chaotic and they might tend to wander off and get away. Yeah. All right. Uh, what I plan on doing, um, is stopping there. We've got two trends yet to go, okay? And I'm not going to do any more reviewing of those other, these other ones that we went through. So you guys need to maybe Look at your notes and read through them. And tomorrow, we're going to look at, hopefully, two of the other trends. And then do a lab. Are we doing I think we're doing, I think we'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. Yep. You'll miss a part of a lab and part of notes. What's the last of retake? Today. Mm -hmm. What if you got done tomorrow? Um, I can give you another day, Thursday.